morning. For those who don't know me yet, I'm Joseph, the at Joseph. I have the pleasure today to introduce to you Kat Mandelstein. She's the worldwide director of, <laughs> I knew I'd flub it, Demand Systems and Digital Media for IBM. I met Kat at Social Media Masters in New York last fall. She's a great pleasure. Without further ado, Kat Mandelstein. Thanks, Joseph. Hi there, and I'm only going to use one slide after watching a couple of videos. This is my first 140 conference, and I usually use long decks, so I'm going to use one slide in my iPad to get through this. Um, this is my first time in Montreal, and I want to thank Joseph for inviting me to this conference. As he mentioned, um, I had met him last year when I was speaking at the Social Media Masters Conference in New York. Um, in, in addition to my day job uh, leading demand systems and digital marketing for IBM Social Business, I also sit on the International Board for Social Media Club. How many members of Social Media Club in the room do we have? Do we have people? It's a couple hands going up. Um, it's a global organization. There are over 300 chapters around the world, but a really great organization to uh, help people who are interested in social media, whether you're doing it for fun or for professional life. Um, but uh, the, the motto of Social Media Club is, if you get it, share it. So um, I sit on the international board, and I'm also the president of our local Austin chapter, which happens to have the largest um, membership of any of the chapters in the world that have actually joined. So uh, I'm a big fan of Social Media Club and everything that uh, Chris Hure and Christy Wells have brought around the world from that. Um, and as I mentioned, this is my first time in Montreal. And an interesting thing happened that ties very well into my topic about work life and social lives colliding. When I uh, woke up Sunday morning, I connected to the internet from the room because I didn't, on my iPhone, I hadn't added my international data plan yet. But I decided to go ahead and check in on Foursquare at the hotel. And about two minutes later, I hear a bang on my iPhone and I look down and I see a message that says, I guess there's gonna be a competition for the mayorship. <laughs> and it turned out to be um, Bertrand Duprin, who I actually know uh, was staying in the same hotel, not for this conference. He's actually at um, Webcom Montreal that's happening tomorrow and uh, I think it starts today and then later into the week. But I had known him from work. He's an Enterprise 2.0 consultant and he's come to many of our IBM conferences uh, to learn about social business and what we're doing with social business. And he just happened to be in the same hotel and, and see me check in and check in. And there our work lives and social lives had really collided. So social uh, has really transformed all of our personal lives in the way we do everything. And you've heard that from several speakers today, and I'm sure most of you are here because of your passion around how social has really transformed your personal life. But what we're seeing is the next wave of social, and it started, but it's really at its infancy, is how social is impacting the business world. And we really think that's a new change. So I've been uh, working in the social space for quite some time. Um, I go all the way back to uh, early days of the internet. Before joining IBM, um, I ran jcpenny.com and helped start jcpenny.com. And uh, we were one of the first successful retail sites on the web, and we're able to do that because of our catalog business and bringing that online. And I can remember our, our first Christmas really launching uh, out and selling via the web. Does anybody know what the uh, first item we sold on jcpenny.com back in 19, Christmas in 1996? Any clue in the room? Uh, Power Rangers figures. So that was the very first sale we had on jcpenny.com. So early days of the internet felt very passionate about what was happening there. I joined IBM in the time of e-business when we were really focused on how did businesses start adopting the internet uh, and really saw a lot of transformation go through there, uh, leading several digital teams. One of them, I founded our uh, developer works program at IBM, which is our uh, social community and web community for learning for software developers. So that was one of the first places where I really learned about the power of community and the power of interaction. And that was long before things like Twitter and Facebook. We were using community forums. We were um, using other real-time chat type formats for doing events. And that was some of the early days of that. And then over time, as the social tools have come online, we're also now developing social tools for businesses. And uh, at IBM, we have a whole portfolio of tools that bring what you have similar functionality to what you have in Facebook uh, and other tools into your company behind the firewall. Uh, we have the, the flagship product, IBM Connections, that basically gives you a lot of that functionality as uh, well as functionality to help you get your job done. 
So some of the key areas where we are seeing um, in business that social is changing business, uh, the first area, and many of you are very involved in it yourself, is in marketing and customer service. So you've seen how social has transformed the marketing department and the customer service departments in your companies. Uh, making a huge difference. Customers can talk directly to you and give you feedback immediately via social. And then marketing, definitely we've talked about branding earlier today. Um, a different form of marketing, really. It's a two-way conversation versus a one-way conversation of traditional marketing. So really about the interaction with the customers versus that one-way dialogue. We're starting some pilots and we're seeing many other companies um, starting pilots in social selling. So the seller's direct interaction with the customers via social. Um, really allowing them to connect, not only from the website, but then be able to go do real-time demos, to be able to have personal chats instantly once they know their customer is interested. It's also saved a tremendous amount of dollars in travel as far as being able to connect and interact with the customers real-time via the web. Another key area, and I actually have a couple friends who did this for a living, is HR. Um, HR is being transformed by social media and social business. And it's used for many things like recruiting. You've heard uh, as far as people going out and looking for employees via social, but then also um, training in many other things within the business. So leveraging social and concepts like gamification, making a web-based training, more interactive, more challenging, where you're actually competing, sales teams love this, we're actually doing some of this inside of IBM, where you're actually competing um, as you complete modules and how well you did, and there's leaderboards, um, leveraging HR, uh, being able to leverage social to uh, enable employees, to motivate employees, and one of the really interesting areas, now that there's a lot more data analysis, is sentiment. Um, within employee social networks, really understanding if the employees are happy, um, what things they're passionate about. So social listening within the company as far as HR is an other area we really see some early adoption on as well too. Uh, operations. You wouldn't necessarily think of operations people as being social, but um, one of the key things we're seeing within operations is social is transforming business processes, and you'll see more and more of this over time. Social being applied to core business processes and the way work gets done. So operations is now being impacted by social as well. And then finally, another key area is around the input into product development and research and design. Think about the way research and product development has historically happened. A company decides what they want to build, they build it, they put it out into market, and then they get feedback. With social, they can actually use their customers, their business partners, their employees to give them the requirements for what they want up front and build what it is that they want and deliver that to market and get a continuous feedback loop via social. So um, both in research and development, we're seeing a lot of adoption and interest there, and then also in the product development area. So crowdsourcing new ideas, um, getting the input of your customers and feedback early on. Uh, IBM itself has been a social business. We were one of the early adopters of some of the social technologies. I can remember back in 1998 when I joined IBM, um, we had a pilot for our own internal um, messaging server. Uh, actually about the time or, or slightly before AIM came on board. But that was amazing to be able to see in a company of 400,000 people around the world, and back then it was about 300 and some thousand. Um, but to be able to see your colleagues in any country come online instantly and communicate with them. And that technology has evolved to add in video, where we can do real-time video conferencing, um, has capability to do translation. So you can um, type it in in your native language and then convert it over to their language so they're reading it in their own language. So really uh, adapting to the way people work and their style of work and allowing different forms of language or uh, capabilities to happen via things like instant messaging as well too. And we were one of the first companies, and I'm, um, most of you who work for larger companies probably have this now, to have social computing guidelines. And we actually wrote those all the way back in 2005 um, around blogging initially, and we've updated those over time. And you can go out and Google IBM social computing guidelines. It's often um, held up as an example of um, good policy built by the employees. It was built by a large group of us all giving input into a social committee. 
Um, so that's one of the core things companies do uh, need to focus on before they launch their social program is really putting some policies in place so the employees, when they're going out externally on social, understand how they should behave. Um, we've also internally added um, how to use social uh, and other things like we have certification programs now for social. So we have training modules that people can take. They're not mandatory, but to really help people who are actively engaged in social, want to learn about the tools, to get certified that they have those capabilities. And that also helps their management understand you know, what they know and uh, support them as far as having them be the ambassadors. So social business is one of the biggest shifts in the structure and the process of the organizations across history. And it, it really takes new sources of creative output. Everyone on the network provides that creative output and rel relinquishes the structure that business has been traditionally built on. If you think about um, traditional business models, it goes way back in history to thinking about uh, organizational design and factories and thinking of processes more like a clock and, you know, the people were the cogs on the process. Well, people are no longer the cogs. They're no longer boxes on an organizational chart. The, the people are now nodes in the network working together as well, too. And it really takes uh, traditional processes of control and decision making within those work processes and allows anyone to create value along the way while focusing on the outcome, not necessarily the process. And there are really three um, ways we look as far as successful things that all businesses need to be a social business. One being transparent, so transparent internally um, in the way you communicate and the way you share your information, and externally, transparent, um, breaking down the firewall, putting windows so that your customers, your business partners, your suppliers can interact with you via social. Now, of course, there will always, always be some things you won't share socially. You won't pre-announce things that um, you have not announced publicly as far as products, or you might not put earnings up early, those type of things. But having those windows in through your firewall where your customers, where your business partners, where your suppliers can help you um, shape your business and what direction you're headed in. So transparency is a key practice in a social business. Being engaged. Um, really about that level of engagement, not just, you know, as a company giving your opinion outwardly, but really taking the opinion of your customers, really taking the opinions of your business partners and suppliers, and taking that to heart. Listening. One of the first things any company should be doing out in social is listening and understanding what is being said about their company and, and synthesizing that data and bringing that in as input as well, too. And then being nimble. Um, social really is a different way of working, so uh, I like to liken it to agile development. So do we have any developers in the room? Um, agile development's been a really successful process over the last decade for software development. Really improved the time to market, the quality of software, uh, and then actually having the features that customers want. That same agile process can be applied to all areas of business, and social really enables that. So really taking iterative feedback, putting uh, your products, what you're working on out there, um, out over a period of time, and then getting that input and developing it. Instead of having very long time project plans, really thinking about having short term stories you're building on what you're working on, rolling those out, and getting that feedback from your internal uh, constituency, and then your customers, business partners, and suppliers as well. So the organiz organizational, uh, uh, organi uh, <laughs> organizational chart of the future cannot be depicted adequately on a sheet of paper as it once was today. The, the org chart is really changing because of social. Uh, one of my friends, David Gray, uh, who's writing a book, The Connected Company, talks about pods. And one of the things uh, a lot of companies are seeing and that Dave talks about is really finding the right people for the right project at the right time and understanding that expertise and leveraging that expertise. So um, that really makes the company different. And the teams wouldn't necessarily come together through your traditional org chart and who is in a team, but based on that expertise. And they would come together and work on that project, complete the project, and then move on to a different project. And the work teams may never be the same. 
but expertise location is another core way that social is enabling businesses. Um, there are expertise lo locators externally, but they're also internally where you can share what your personal skills, your expertise, and what you care about passionately too. And along that same line, um, one thing that we're seeing is social graphs. So we all probably know about our own personal social graph. That thought's been around on the um, web for a while. But inside of your company, thinking about your social graph and how you work with people on projects. So um, just like you have a live stream in your social graph publicly, thinking how with your social graph internally, it applies to your work stream and how you can apply your connections and um, how you interact with people and figure out the best nodes, the people who are the experts, the connectors, the people that connect you to the people who give you the right answer. Think about how many times you didn't know something and you asked somebody you knew and they connected you to the right person who had the answer and how much more quickly that happens now on social. Um, there are a couple great tools I've seen externally. Has anybody seen Bottlenose? Um, Bottlenose is a tool that lets you see visually people who are talking about the same topics that you're talking about and who they're connected to. Um, there are also tools for that for business. We have one out of our research and development team called SANT, and it allows you to see who you're connected to and what country, what topics you have in common, and it allows you to find some of that expertise. Um, I had a really interesting experience last year. IBM has uh, the Corporate Service Corps where we send people out to developing countries around the world, much like the Peace Corps, but it's a prof professional Peace Corps. And uh, one of our projects we were assigned to in the city of Rio was with the education department. Well, I hadn't had a whole lot of background other than having my own children in the education system, but with um, educational project development for IT, and neither had any of the other executives that were on my team. Well, uh, we went and spent time using our own internal social network connections, looking at some of the expertise, and found several people, and they were different countries around the world. One actually happened to be here in Canada, up in Toronto, um, and pulled them into our work team. So even though we were down in Rio working with the Department of Education, I was quickly able to reach out, find an expert in Canada, one in Europe, who helped us develop the recommendation we took back for the Department of Education on how to track and um, grow their students through their whole life cycle within the education system. They were going from a paper record system to a digital record system and were having a challenging time keeping track of students and helping them progress. So we were able to help take recommendations from other IBM projects around the world, input from those edu education experts, our personal research in the schools, talking to parents, talking to teachers, talking to principals, talking to the students, and come back with a recommendation built from a virtual work team. So that really made a big difference as well too. So um, project streams and live streams really coming together. One of the key things that's very different within a social business is breaking down that firewall. The, the traditional approach that the firm creates value and then exchanges it with its customers has kind of died. Customers' contextual experiences and co-created co value are replacing that company-centric um, value. And um, Generation Y is also really driving a lot of this change into the, the workplace. By 2025, 75% of the workforce will be millennials. So it's hard for employers to not stop and think about the impact of the generation that grew up using mobile devices, the web, moving into the workforce, and really expecting to use social technologies, to use mobile technologies, to work very differently. As baby boomers are reaching retirement, 75 million Millennials are expected to hit the job market about the same time that the baby boomers are retiring. So our workforce is going to change drastically over the next decade. And 41% of Gen Y say that social media is critical to them in the workplace. It, 40 to 45% of college age and young adults would accept a lower paying job if they had the flexibility of dev device choice, social media access and mobility, according to a Cisco study that was conducted last year. So Gen Y is really driving a lot of the change and it's coming very rapidly. It'll happen in the next um, decade. So the last thing I'll touch on, because I'm almost at time, um, one of the key issues many companies are struggling with in social adoption internally is cultural change. 
So they're kind of two key areas, cultural change and fear of sharing data externally. Cultural change, one of the key elements there is inside of companies, you need to build community just as you would externally. So internally, community management is just as critical as community management is for your community on the external web. So within your company, as you build out communities, having community managers. And community managers are actually one of the fastest growing jobs in the US today, both internally and externally as well too. A Gallup special report exploring employee engagement in the workplace found that engaged employees are more involved and enthusiastic about their work. In a recent study by the National Computing Center showed, employees using social business tools have an increased connectedness by 39%, and a third of them reported much higher work-life satisfaction because of using social technologies in their jobs. Social brings real value both to the employee and to the business itself, empowering them to work in new ways they've never worked before, and really transforming the business. So as work and social collide, it's really causing earth-shattering shattering differences within the company. And I'll end it by saying, uh, sharing something that our former CEO, Lou Gerstner, said. In the end, an organization is nothing more than the collective capacity of the people to create value. So thank you very much. <laughs>